Greetings and salutations, Michigan Ultimate Survivor League members. It is I, James L. C. Graves, coming to you on a Tuesday morning once again. Last week I had a little bit of work to do. Couldn't do it quite till Thursday, but here we are on a Tuesday morning. There's a store, by the way, in case you don't know. Uh, at 8.28 a.m., here we go. We're going to talk about uh, the recent developments of this weekend from the Michigan Ultimate Survivor League. And we are going to break down much more detailed the playoff picture <clears throat> in the league. But before we do anything, we're going to go and we're going to look at, uh, you know, who fell this week real quick. Ryan Frazier's kryptonite on the board. He f successfully avoids being the first team in history to lose all 11 games. I uh, got a win before the Lions did anyway. Um, looking through here, you know, look at some big fallers. We got, uh, well, not a ton of fallers. Digger Phelps falls from 16 to 30. Sag Nasty in a critical loss loses and goes from tw uh, 14 to 22. Brady's back up on a two-game skid. Going to be bad there. <clears throat> then we get to the top 20. Kakambas, Honolulu Blue Balls, Golf of Balls, the Apache Chiefs. These numbers don't mean as much now as they used to, by the way. Just here so I don't get fined. Finds himself number 15. I don't know if he's ever been ranked this year. But, uh, yeah, I don't think he would have been because he would have been 4-3. and three. Uh, Getting up here, you'll see that there's some colors here. I'll tell you what these colors mean here in a little bit. But uh, DeWyans loses and stays at number one. That is a good place to be if you can lose and stay on top. Tips and Tricks moves up from number seven to number two. Miss Orange Man and Hot Wife moves up from number nine to number three. You feeling lucky punk loses, falls from number two to number four. More on them in a minute. A lot of a lot of rounds out your top five with his fourth straight victory, <clears throat> putting him at number five. Now, we don't have time for this kind of stuff because at the end of the day, these numbers don't mean anything. But it does help gauge where you are. If you're ranked, that means you're doing pretty good. Um, but what we need to talk about now. Oh, I forgot to do something here. Give me one second. I got to throw this over here. Okay, I should be able to see that probably. Okay, so without further ado, let's take a look at this playoff picture, okay? Number one, we're going to look at the Jeff Lebowski conference here. We have two teams, Alada Valada, and how much longer will liberalism be legal? Seven and two each. Now, here's the kicker, okay? Alada Valada versus how much longer will liberalism will be legal? Are right, They're playing this week, folks. They're playing this week. A lot of a lot of versus how much longer will liberalism be legal? Seven and two, seven and two. The next closest is Joran Chubble. Uh, Kyle Stoker, five and four. Uh, my wife texts me knowing I'm filming a podcast. What the hell's wrong with her? I don't know. Um. Sorry about that. So <clears throat> that's it. I mean, this is it. You look at this right here. A lot of a lot of versus how much longer liberalism be legal? Five and six. This is for the conference, folks. This week, the winner of this will be able to start basically nobody next week. Don't start nobody, though. If you start nobody, you'll get randomized. You can start backups next week. You will win your conference and essentially get two buys. The winner of this week. That's all there is to it. Um... And then, so that's that. One of those two will win that conference this weekend. So one of the bigger games in the history of muscle right there, two weeks in, two weeks to go. But there's another one that's even bigger technically, although we'll see. Kirk Lazarus Conference, we have five teams who are six and three and one team who is five and four. As of right now, Goff and Ball's in the lead. Colloquial Kiss, the Apache Chief, Kakambas, and FarmersOnly.com, all six and three with Mo Tunny Mo problems. I do not believe, as mathematically eliminated, Funny enough, Mo Tunny Mo Problems has more points than almost all of these teams, except for Colloquial Kiss. So let's look at this one here. Still, this roast, I mean, this we're just straight up calling. This race here is still too close to call. Got a lot going on here. Uh, if you're in, if you're one of these six teams, with two weeks to go, six teams in this conference still eligible for winning that conference. So not going to really go over it because there's a lot of things that can happen. Basically, if you're one of these six teams, try to win. That's all I got to say. Ron Burgundy Conference. We got Tips and Tricks, 7-2, and two, with two 6-3 and three teams. Zeke's Relationship Corner, which is Tom Farmer, and then Michael Myers, Nan Tim Nice, and then my ball, Zach Ertz, 5-4, uh, and four, and Chubb Ertz, 5-4, and four, along with Low Hanging Fruit, 5-4. But in this one here, you got Tips and Tricks. Now, they have two games going. They have to play Cheech Key and Honolulu Blues still. 
Both of those teams are mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, but they're both in the playoff hunt for points. So those are big deals. Um, Tips and Tricks uh, has beaten Zeke's Relationship Corner and Namtab Knights. So that's a huge deal for them. They have the tiebreaker on these two teams below them. So barring complete disaster, Tips and Tricks should have a chance, I mean, of I mean, uh, winning this conference. I mean, he well, he's going to have a chance. We should win the conference. But with one loss by Tips and Tricks and two wins – by the either of these two teams, it won't matter. But if 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 uh, if everyone ends up eight and three, then uh, Tips and Tricks has beaten both of these teams. So that is the scoop there. Still a little bit to go here, but it's important to know that Zeke's Village Corner has lo- and Nantel Dice have both lost to Tips and Tricks. Now, technically speaking, these two teams may still be mathematically in it. Haven't done the math on that, or these three teams, I should say. Uh, but mm, it's going to say very doubtful at this point. We'll look more at that next week because, you know, as it comes down to it, we start focusing on uh, the real scenarios. Bottom line is Tips and Tricks controls his own destiny uh, with a win and a loss from either of these two teams. He would win the conference um, with two wins. He would win the conference, but if he loses both games or if he loses one game and then these team, one of these two teams wins both games, then they could win the conference. So uh, still a lot to be played out there. Zeke's relationship corner has 803 points. That is madness, by the way. Uh, yeah. What is it? Okay, yeah, sorry. That is madness. Zeke's relationship corner. Good job for you, by the way. Um, Jess Spagoli conference. We got Miss Orange Man and Hot Wife and, Br- and with 7-2. and two. Brady's backup. How long to Biden is rushing? Peter Pimps and Giggle Giggle. All at six and three. Digger Phelps at five and four. Here's the facts on this one, folks. Miss Orange Man and Hot Wife play has beaten Brady's backup. How long until Biden is rested? Giggle Giggle and Digger Phelps. So he's beaten all of those teams, but he has not played Pay Dirt Pimps yet. But they play each other this week. So make no mistake, folks. If Miss Orange Man and Hot Wife beats Pay Dirt Pimps this week, he will win the conference because the worst he can do is finish eight and three at that point, and the best anyone else can do is finish eight and three. So, and he's beaten literally every single other team here. Okay, um, so if he wins this con- this week, he wins the conference. If he loses this week, however, opens up a lot of possibilities because if he loses this week, he'll be seven and three. Pay Dirt Pimps will be seven and three. Pay Dirt Pimps will have the tiebreaker on him only. Now, it gets a little more complicated because Brady's backup, how long is Biden arrested, and Giggle Giggle, they may win. Um, I think two of those teams are actually playing each other this week, though, so one of those two teams will win. So, um, at this point, we are saying that the only official call we are making on this conference is that if Miss Orange Man Hot Wife wins, he wins the conference. If he loses, things are going to get interesting for next week's podcast. That's all I'm saying. So, that's where we're at with that one. Now, I do believe how long until Biden is arrested is playing Giggle Giggle or something like that this week. Let me look here and see what we got going on here. Go back. Oh, my God. My stomach hurts. Um, ah, wrong schedule button. Brady's back. Okay. So, Giggle Giggle plays Brady's backup and how long until Biden is arrested both in the next two weeks. So, Bray, or yeah, Giggle Giggle controls their own destiny to a point um, because if they lose either of those games, uh, it's going to be a problem. Then we get down to Whispering Eye, or sorry, Frank, so that Miss Orange Man Hot Wife, they need to win this thing. All right. They lose, who knows what happens. Frank Drebin conference, a little bit tighter, tighter here. Whispering eyes, seven and two, control their own destiny. Obviously, they went out and they're in. Aiken for a ship. Sag Nasty's not above top notch. And just here, so I don't get fined. Paul Wall and Wine coming back with a vengeance. Uh, okay, Jeff Spicoli conference. Miss Orange. Well, we already did that one. Okay, Frank Drebin conference. Whispering eyes, seven and two, has to play concussion protocol and Aiken for a ship in the final week. Concussion Protocol is out of the running. Aiken First Ship is not. Aiken First Ship controls his own destiny here because Aiken First Ship, if he wins out, he will win the conference because of the way who he is beaten. 
um, and that he would have to beat Whispering Eyes, obviously, too. Um, get down a little more deeper, a little deeper, I should say. What you know about rolling down the deep? Sag Nasty has lost to both Aiken for a ship and Whispering Eyes. Just here so I don't get fined has beaten Whispering Eyes but lost to Aiken for a ship. And then Helmets on 98 has beaten Aiken, Whispering Eyes, and just here, so I don't get fine, but lost to Sag Nasty. So there's still a lot of stuff that can play out here. Because Helmets on 98 is 5 and 4. But, hypothetically speaking, they went out. And the right combination of things happen. They can still win this conference. It would be a tough one. <clears throat> but in order for that to work, Aiken for a ship has to beat Whispering Eyes in that final week. And get a lot of help. Helmets on 98, probably not going to have a chance. But mathematically, I do believe they're still alive. Brody Bruce Conference... We have two seven and two teams, two six and three teams, and then two five and four teams that are pretty much out of it. But let's talk about the four teams above them. We got ninety nine percent luck, one percent heart, seven and two. They still have to play Tallywhackers and Double C's, who are both pretty much out of the running entirely. Um, they're both not going to win by record. They're both not going to get in by points on the playoffs. So those two games are pretty meaningless. Luckily, Josh Crampton will never be randomized, so you know he's not going to get randomized. Double C's, mm, he might. And if he does, that's what the randomizer is for. 99% uh, luck has beaten Hernandez, Hitman, Steel C City Sackers, and Hockenstein. These are the three teams that they are in the run, that are all in the running. He's beaten them all. So 99% luck controls his own destiny. He wins out and he's in. He loses. He could get some helping in. Uh, Hernandez Hitman is the most important threat to him, which, who is beaten. Hernandez Hitman has yet to play Steel City Sackers, who's in the running, and then my Providence Power, who is out mathematically and in the, out of the playoff running for the points. However, he, Hernandez Hitman, has lost to Hockenstein, so Hockenstein has a little bit of chance. He has a tiebreak over Hernandez Hitman. So that would be, and then Steel City Sackers did not do their math. Oh, God. Oh, no, I didn't do anyone else's math. Um, Hernandez, Hitman, lost to Hockenstein, but beat Steel City, City Sackers. Hockenstein's in the running. Steel City, I mean, all four of these teams can do it. Obviously, you heard first here, 99% luck, 1% heart controls. His own destiny, he has a tiebreak over Hernandez, Hitman. Hernandez, Hitman can win get and get in with a little help. Steel City, Sackers, and Hockenstein need a lot of help. Hockenstein, not as much as Steel City, Sackers, I will tell you that much right now. Um, <clears throat> so there's that. And then finally, the Rod Kimball Conference. We said it all along. This would be the best conference. If you look here, the next to last week, we have four teams in the top 20. DeWayans, number one. Uthian Lucky Punk, number four. Nice, I don't. Honolulu Blue Balls, 14 and 19, respectively. Now, this is really interesting here because never in the history of this league has it been so tight going down with so many quality teams. I mean, we've got Gary King, Brian David, Ryan Frazier, Larry Weinberg, and uh, Derek Gregory, all still very much alive. Five out of the 12 teams in the hunt for the conference title but two weeks ago. And now here's the kicker. DeWayans, where are we at? DeWayans has yet to play two of these teams. You feeling lucky, punk, and sticks it in you. I don't know why. Can I make this font bigger so everyone can see it now that the podcast is almost over? But, you know. Okay, here we go. Uh, DeWayans has yet to play Uthio and Lucky Punk and Sticks in here. They've beaten Honolulu Blue Balls. However, they lost to Now You See Me, Now You Don't. So when that, And then you look at Uthio and Lucky Punk. They have yet to play DeWayans, which is this week, number one versus number four, for two weeks to go. Huge game, bigger than the other game that was for the conference probably, uh, just because of rankings. Um, but they also have to play the Clockwork Elves, who are mathematically out of it entirely, both by points and by record. So they... Hopefully, we'll submit a lineup at least. If not, so the randomizers for Thiel and Lucky Punk has beaten Sticks It In and Nice See Me Now You Don't, but they've lost to Honolulu Blue Balls. Then you get Now You See Me Now You Don't. They have yet to play Mike Ditka. Tony Cromwell will not get randomized. Honolulu Blue Balls, another team that's in the run here, so that, you know, that last week could be huge. Now You See Me Now You Don't, now you don't has beaten the Wyans. That is the key fact here, folks. They've beaten the Wyans, lost to Sticks It In, and they lost to You Thiel and Lucky Punk. And then finally, we get to Honolulu. Well, no, we got two more teams here. Honolulu Blue Balls has beaten, has yet to play Sticks It In You or Now You See Me, Now You Don't. So very important. They control their own destiny to make the playoffs at least, possibly to win the conference. 
They've beaten you, Theo and Lucky Punk, but lost to DeWayans. So a lot of people beating on each other up. As we said from day one, what happened? It has happened. These teams have beaten each other up all year long. And now that we're in the final two weeks, holy shit, the tiebreakers, the craziness with who's beating who, it gets madness. Now, sticks it in ya. They have beaten none of these teams so far, but they still have to play Honolulu Blue Balls, according to my notes, and DeWayans. So, even though they haven't beaten anyone, and they've lost to 9790 and New Theo Lucky Punk, if they win out, they're going to be 8-3, and they've beaten two of the teams they're up against, including DeWayans. Oh, my God, this conference is, like, insane. No doubt about it. Any of these five teams could win. But it all starts with this matchup, this week's matchup, with DeWayans taking on New Theo and Lucky Punk in an absolutely enormous game. <clears throat> one of those teams is going to win, one of those teams is going to lose. Captain Obvious here, I know. But... These other teams are beating each other up up until the very end. So I can't wait to see how this plays out. We'll see here uh, after this week. So that's that. Now, we are here now to talk about the playoff breakdown. As you all know, historically, we have, and especially for new owners here, we have multiple playoff way, ways to get the playoffs. And I'm here to officially break it down right now. So... We're going to go over here. We'll skip that. So, despite the fact that we have 12 more teams than last year, the way the conferences work, with an odd number of conferences, it actually makes things harder to make the playoffs. So, we have seven conference winners. They will all get buys. Because of that, the way the seven buy works is that instead of last year, we had 26 teams make the playoffs. This year, we have 25 teams make the playoffs. So, one fewer team makes the playoffs. Uh... That being said, the top seven seeds will all get buys. That's going to be these guys, which will for hereby, hereby be labeled in gold, which will make sense here in a minute. And then the next 12 teams, based on record only, and then points as a tiebreaker, okay, will get the next seeds, and those are going to be blue. And then we'll go to points. So out of those 19 teams, the teams that are left – when you take those 19 teams out, whoever has the highest points will get in, and they'll be marked with a green bar. And then, finally, out of all the teams that are left, every team that is in the hunt gets one entry per win to get in the wild card round. Okay? That's how that works. Um, and they will be pink, purple. So, 25 teams make the playoffs. Conference winners in orange, record owners in blue, green would be points, and then magenta would be wild card. Now, let's look at the point standings. It is staggering. Staggering. This is the sorted by points total. Okay? You may have seen that gold bar up there. Ryan Frazier's kryptonite. Is the worst team in the league. They finally won a game. They're one and eight, four hundred seventy-two points. Freedom Fighter is four and five, four hundred ninety-eight points. But this isn't important. What's it? these are the bottom of the barrel, right? But you get up here, and you don't have to go very far to find ninety-nine percent luck, one percent heart. This is Rocky Keeling's seven and two, fourth-ranked team in the nation, with the seventy-first highest amount of points in the league. With a staggeringly low 578.76 points. Holy hell balls. This, I'm just seeing this for the first time. This is madness. How in the hell is this guy winning games? I don't know. I don't know, but I can tell you this much. This gold bar doesn't mean a damn thing if he doesn't win out. Because if he loses out, especially, he is not making the playoffs. Because he has 578 points. Oh, my God. Winnie Cooper's 2-7 and seven scored more points than he is. This guy's winning this conference right now. Now, this could be really bad, though, because if he, if he has successfully won this many games, scored this few points, it probably means he hasn't started anybody worth a broke dick, which would mean that he would be a dominant threat in the playoffs. So this is important to pay attention to right here. 71st out of 84 teams in points, 7-2, and two, winning his conference Rocky, you'd better win the next two games because you were going to get destroyed in the point standings. We scroll up here. We go up to, uh, let's see, okay, the next closest is Whispering Eyes, also winning their conference, 32 most points, 
32nd most points, 681. But that's still that's over 100 points more than this guy. Uh, wow. And then we get up here, and you'll see Honolulu blue balls, golf and balls, etc. But this is important because this is showing where we stand as of right now today. As of right now today, the most scoring team is Zeke's Relationship Corner with 803.74 points. Now, if you notice, he has a blue line because as of right now, if the season ended today, he would make it in based on record slash points. He's doing very well because in all the six and three teams, he has the most points. It's going to be very hard for him probably not to make the playoffs unless he loses out. Then he'll be six and five and he would not have a chance. He might have a chance with that many points. Now, if you look at my ball, Zach Ertz, he is white as of right now, but I'm going to change him to green because if the season were to end right now, he would get in. He has scored the second most, second highest amount of points, 775.1. And he is not making the playoffs based on record as of right now. Okay. Then you got DeWyans, number one overall team in the nation, scored the third highest amount of points. That makes sense. Uh, how long until Biden's rest has scored the fourth amount of points? He's out on record if the season were to end today. And then you have Cheechke and Wagstaff Whalers, both with three and six records that if the league were to end today, they would make the playoffs based on how many points they've scored. So what you want to do is look at teams. Now, you look at 775, that is a hell of a lot of points. He could make it in based on record, though. If he wins, he'll be, if he wins out, he'll be 7-4. and four. Um, So his record probably would get him in on the playoffs by itself. A lot can still unfold here. But you get teams down here, I mean, eh. well, these two teams are who you really have to worry about if you're looking for points because they are not going to get in based on record. It's impossible. So 739, 738. So if you're down here and you're the Digger Phelpses, you're the Ted Lasso's Biscuits, you're the Better Bring Your A games, or even, you know, I mean, 40 points, that's outscoring them 20 points a week. Uh, take your Vax and shove it. Honolulu Blues, Mo Tunny, Mo Problems, Fabulous Baker Boys, Brooklyn Brigade. Let me ask you a question. You're in trouble. Stafford's Bastards. At this point, I mean, yeah, you're down 60 points. That's not that much, though. It's 30 points a week you have to outscore them by. So we're going to go down to about, we're going to say low-hanging fruit. You're being outscored by approximately 70 points. That's outscoring 35 points a week, folks. Not that hard. Um, you can do it. Now, Brady's backup. This guy needs to start winning some games. I know he allegedly had an issue with his lineup being submitted two weeks ago. But my God, dude, you need to win games because you're not making it in on points. It's not going to happen. If you notice right now, you're six and three. Kakambas are six and three. These are teams that are six and three. Sag Nasty, Namtab Knights, FarmersOnly.com. They're six and three, but haven't scored a lot of points, which is why they are not blue lined. Blue line is based on record and points, because the highest points get it based on that record. So that's where we're at. If the league were to end today, these would be your playoff teams, including the 71st ranked point wise, 99% luck, 1% heart. The luckiest dude in the world, apparently. Oh, my God. Uh, that would be it. I mean, this would be where we're at. These would be your conference winners and your division champions. And uh, these green lines would be your points, people. Now, but again, my ball, Zach Ertz, could easily get in on record. Okay? Could easily get in on record. These two are not getting in on record. These are the numbers you have to compete against, really. 775, you don't have to compete against that. I mean, you do. If he loses out, you're going to have to compete against that. But even still, I mean, you have to outscore these guys, not this guy. So you've seen the breakdown. You know what's going to happen. Next week, we'll have a comprehensive breakdown of every possible scenario because right now there's still too many variables out there. But set your lineups, people. It's getting good. Some absolutely enormous games coming this week. Can't wait. And uh, you have a good one.